hi welcome to my channel this is super light but that is kind of on brand so we are going to be doing the mid-year flicker book tab i really like the way jay did theirs in their channel so I'm going to copy them and they actually started from like the last question until the beginning and the best book of the year is going to be at the end. So the first question is books to read before 2024 and my TBR is endless and I actually want to read every single book in my TBR. So every single book that ever existed, that is the answer. But to like really answer, I'm going to say three books that I really, really want to read like right now. The first one is a horror one that is Tender is the Flesh. Then we have Our Violent Ends, which is the sequel to This Violent Delights. And lastly, one last stop because I still cannot believe like that is the most popular sapphic book there is and I still have not read it. So I really need to. The next question is the most beautiful book you got this year. And I made a blog where I got three books and that's all the books I've got, like at least the ones that I bought myself. So from those books, the most pretty one that I think is Young Blood. I just love that this is sapphic and it's vampires, there's a lot of red. The outfits are really cool. I think it's really pretty. The thing is that I look for reviews after I bought it and I was like, oh, let me actually see what it is about, like what are people saying. People are not saying good things. Basically, like the mo the thing that I caught the most from all of the reviews is that the main protagonist is white and she has the white saber, I don't know, complex. Like she is trying to save everyone and putting her on the central place of everything. And that is kind of annoying. So I don't really want to read this anymore, but I may just do it just because I have it before I sell it. You know, I don't want to sell it without even trying it. Then we have books that made me happy. And the first one that came to my mind when I saw this question was Spellbound. This is so sweet and magical and like everything good. And I love the way the author wrote it. And I'm actually going to try more books of this author because I just love the vibe. The, the, the entire atmosphere is sweet, it's positive, it's nice. And the second book I'm going to mention is The Lila Green Doesn't Care. This one was recommended a lot from different people, but mostly from Dani. I got her recommendation. I was like, okay, I'm going to try it. And I'm so happy I did because this is also another book where the main protagonists are queer. And there's barely anything but related to that, you know, like people judging. And I really like that. Like, I just want to read books where being queer is nothing out of this world and it's just normal and you know like peaceful this next question is truly challenging my statement that i don't cry a lot with books because it is what books made you cry this year and there is a list of these books like <laughs> i have an entire list of books that made me cry but i don't want to repeat books and one of the books that made me cry is actually the best book of the year so i'm not going to mention that one so instead i'm going to mention two briefly ones. The first one is The Lucky List. Her mother died from cancer and she's alone with her father now and she lost her friend group because she broke up with her boyfriend and the entire group split up and now there's a new girl in town and she becomes her friend because their parents are friends and she starts realizing she may be feeling some ways towards this girl. I cried a lot with this book especially towards the end where things start happening like this girl her entire journey you get to see her trying to not think or feel her emotions you know trying to suppress all of that but you cannot and it got me so emotional when i was reading it um i couldn't help it i cried for a long while while reading it. and the second book i'm going to mention is forget me not this is a book where these two girls are dating but they live in a tiny town and everyone is homophobic there so they cannot express their love so they are a secret 
and they are waiting to go to college and actually live their lives. But before that happens, one of them gets into an accident and she forgets everything that happened the last two years they have been together. So she doesn't even remember she likes girls. So she has to go through the entire process again. And it's heartbreaking because there, there are people who knew but didn't like it and are trying to mess up with her mind. Now my new favorite character and I said I didn't want to repeat books, but it feels dishonest to say anything else. My new favorite character, like the entire year, is Yamilet from The Lesbian's Guide to Catholic School. Again, I have to thank Sam. She sent me this book and I was so excited. She is the absolute best and I will always have her in my heart. I love this book. Like, if you have seen my videos, I probably have mentioned the lesbianas back to back to the school at some point. I will say I'm sorry for mentioning it so much, but I love it. So you will have to tolerate me. Of course, this book is about a lesbian who had to change schools because she confessed her love to her best friend and she didn't take it last nicely. And now that she is going to a Catholic school, she is going to pretend to be straight or at least to like not like anyone. And it doesn't work. She meets someone really nice and that is visibly queer and challenging everything that is going on in the Catholic school. And Yamilet is so real. It felt like a, I was reading about a real girl who is trying to move through life, being a teenager and being different by being lesbian. And how scared she was of people judging her and how she evolves throughout the book, how she becomes more confident on who she is. Now to my furry question new favorite author and i actually have four of them i usually don't read books by the same author i always read the same series by the author and never try anything new but this year i've been challenging myself to actually pick up books from authors i already read and it was it's been amazing sometimes it has not but for the most part it's been amazing so the first two authors i'm going to mention are rachel lippincott and alison derrick they wrote she gets the girl also another book i won't shut about rachel actually wrote the lucky list that i already mentioned and allison wrote forget me not so i already know i love their books next favorite author i'm going to give you a couple of seconds so you can guess <laughs> uh sonora reyes i read this one and i also read the luis ortega survival club which that one was like the way they write their books is spectacular and they make all of their characters feel so real and I could connect with all of them so much. The Luis Ortega Survival Club deals with sexual assault so it's a more challenging read but it's still so worth it and it has the fun family trope and it's still it has their imprint of being a tough read, but also leaving you hopeful. I'm going to be reading anything they write from now on. Like these are the only book, two books they have out now. So once they come out with more books, I'm going to be reading all of them, always. And the last one I'm going to mention is Rivers Solomon. I read The Deep and Sorrowland, and I loved both of them. The Deep is definitely my favorite, but Sorrowland was also a great read. Both of them deal with heavy topics as well, so they are not super light reads, super fun, but they are entertaining and they make you feel emotions and, you know, like they truly make a connection. At least they created a connection with me. The next question is the biggest surprise I had throughout the year. And for this, I have to mention Sorland. I truly wasn't expecting everything that happened in that book. Sometimes it's really graphic. There are killings and there is a cult involved. It's about this girl that lived in a cult and she escaped. And in the first scene, you get to see her having her babies, her twins, in the middle of the woods with no assistance. And then she, throughout the book, she's escaping this cult because they are trying to get her back. It has a wonderful message about how white people would, would end up in cults and how people are trying to do their best with the resources they have. You get to see different sapphic relationships she has throughout the book and none of them are nice. There is toxicity and I like seeing different types of sapphic relationships and not always the same. And as you go reading, it turns into a sci-fi kind of book and I wasn't expecting that. 
So that's definitely the biggest surprise I had with this book. Now, my biggest disappointment. This is going to hurt some people, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but it is The Priory of the Orange Tree. It was just too long. Like, did it really need to be a thousand pages plus? I don't think so. It was great. It, the characters are complex. The entire world is complex. Everything is complex in this book. So it makes sense it's long. But that long, like, it could have been two books. <laughs> And I would have enjoyed it a lot more. Next question is the most anticipated release for the rest of the year. And I honestly, I'm not great to keep with, in keeping tracks with new releases. I made a list at the beginning of the year and I kind of been following it. Mostly because I see the news on Instagram or somewhere that the book is out and then I pick it up. But it's not because I'm actually checking the calendar and seeing you know but there is a specific one that i actually want to read so badly right now and it's called eris kelly doesn't date uh this the third book in the the lila green doesn't care universe i love iris i i always prefer that character that is always happy and positive but then you get to see like they have more complex emotions but they don't show it so often until they do and then it's I love it. And then for a book that came out and I still haven't read, the first one on my list is She is a Hunting, which is, I'm pretty sure it's sapphic and it's horror. And the cover is beautiful. So it has everything I love. Now, the Vesico. And there is not another option but for me to mention Bloodmark. This is the second book in the Legendborn series that I read at the beginning of the year. I love this book. It's amazing. It's also super long, it's chunky. But I love every second of it, the main character, how complex she is, the entire family dynamic, you know, working with her ancestors and the magic system as well, like different groups having different beliefs and powers and how they work with the magic they have. And I cannot wait for the third book when it comes out. I don't think there is a date, but I'm still going to be waiting for that book because it's so good. Now we have the best books of the first half of 2023. Some dumb rolls, please. I'm going to mention the most obvious one first, because then the other two you wanna, we won't be able to guess. But the first one, say it with me. The Lesbianas Guide to Catholic School. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm, this is actually the best book of the year. Like even better than The Lesbianas Guide to Catholic School. That has a lot of emotion and meaning for me. This is just the best, like in every single way. Delicious Monsters by Giselle Sambui. This book is amazing. Like I have never read another book more perfect than this. It had a plot twist that I wasn't expecting at all. I was shocked. Like it was so well planned out. You really do not see it coming, but then it makes so much sense. It's about these two girls that live in different times, one of them in the past, and then the other one is making a podcast about her, about the girl in the past. And the girl in the past is living in a haunted house. Like they moved recently and it's about everything that happens. It's horror, it's mystery. It's about telling the story of a black girl that never got her story told. So it's given her the spotlight she should have gotten. It was actually super creepy and horror at the beginning, but then it transformed, it evolved, it became so much more. This book made me cry, it made me laugh, it made me scared. Like there are some scenes that make, just remembering is making me itchy, uh, but, it's still an amazing book. I recommend it. It has a list of three warnings because it deals with a lot of heavy topics because the things that happened in that haunted house to be to make it haunted were terrible. And the, like I said, check out the trigger warning list because there is a lot. Still, like the best book of the year. Realistically, I don't think there is going to be any other book that is going to top this and lastly because i couldn't not mention promise voice this is the best audiobook i've read my entire life it is an entire production it has music sound effects the people talking it's an experience to listen to this book but it's not only that it's also the story it's about these three guys that go to a private school for all boys 
and the head teacher is killed and they are the main suspects and they have to find out who actually did it let me know in the comments down below what has been like if you have one top book for the entire year which one is it and if you cannot choose let me know your top three and if you made it this far leave me the rose emoji for the lesbian aspect of this book and that's all for me if you like this video give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and i will see you next week Thank you.